All right, we have uh, reset load optimized defaults. This is the way things are gonna look straight out of the gate. If you have this BIOS, you know, generally the settings are gonna look pretty close to this in any manufacturer's BIOS, but uh, keep in mind this is a gigabyte, you know, ITX board. It might look different if you have an Asus or, uh, you know, an ASRock or something like that. But uh, advanced, uh, you know, frequency settings, Look at this, we have lots of options in here, even controlling the graphics clock and stuff like that, which is awesome. So what I would suggest is right off the hop, you wanna check your memory and make sure you know you get your, your quick memory uh, you know, set. And uh, you know if you have a, a slower kit, you could try and overclock it past its rated speed, but typically Ryzen's been pretty bad for not accepting memory overclocks. But uh, you know, if you just go to uh, Extreme Memory Profile XMP, hit Profile One, you'll see here it loads 3,000 megahertz for my 3,000 megahertz kit of RAM. But uh, I'm even going to bring it higher because I can, and uh, we'll go 3,200 because my 30, 3,000 kit will go to 3,200 without even altering really any settings or anything like that. So if I was you, uh, you know, playing around with memory for the first time, I would check your MP XMP profile, save your, you know, changes, go over here, save your changes, and make sure it boots up. Uh, you could even run, you know, a, a stability test of some sort to make sure that your overclock on your memory is working and then kind of go from there because it's very important to have you know uh, get the fastest memory possible so uh, we see here graphics clock we'll play with this a little bit later I'll, we'll actually do it in Ryzen Master in Windows uh, it didn't seem to take when I uh, set this manually because you can go like 15 you know 66 you could set it uh, you know manually in here but we'll leave it to auto and we'll use Ryzen Master in Windows because that'll be a little bit easier later on so uh, here's your CPU clock ratio you might want to start low like uh, 3.8 and then uh, we'll we'll check out voltages in a second but uh, I, I know for a fact it'll do 40 and that's four gigahertz which is awesome you can go in here advanced CPU core settings and then even just disable AMD cool and quiet if you want because uh, that's usually what people do when they're overclocking um, you could change the steady state control like make it so it doesn't down clock itself automatically uh, you can even you know put one two or three cores <laughs> but we'll set that to auto so yeah uh, yeah just all you need to do is set you know 38 make sure it boots uh, you know, and then kind of go up from there and going along with that, you will have to play with, uh, some voltage settings, but look at this ITX board, uh, really good settings. You can do a lot of stuff in here, change memory timings, uh, and do a lot of stuff. Uh, I just was surprised that this much was in here on this more like budget oriented, uh, you know, B350 ITX board where I have seen, uh, you know, gigabyte motherboards that had a hell of a lot less in the BIOS that were you know, even more expensive than this board was. So uh, advanced voltage settings uh, for four gigahertz, my CPU V core, I'm gonna hit 1.385, uh, with 3.75 is what it defaults to. And then uh, the system on a chip the SOC voltage, I put to 1.2 instead of 1.1 for my overclock. Load line calibrations, I left this to auto because there's no need to you know there's all kinds of settings for this extreme just leave it to auto this uh changes the voltage uh bumps it up before you do something that really puts load on the cpu to make sure that you don't get uh, stability issues um you know and if you're going hardcore overclocking you might want to change these settings but there's no need to even change the ram voltage or anything because uh the xmp profile took care of that and then you know any other settings in the bias you want to alter probably not but uh, it might take you a few, you know, tries. And if you know you're, you're having trouble overclocking, don't be afraid to start small and, you know, kind of go from there. Pretty cool. But the Spice 2 is, uh, it's even got, uh, you know, control for the RGB header like my AORS does right in the BIOS. I love that you can change your RGB or LED connect enabled. You could turn the LEDs off on the board, stuff like that. This uh, board even has, uh, you can see, you can set this. Yeah, this is where you would uh set force and then auto you would change uh umi spec uma specified that's where you change your uh the amount of ram that your uh integrated graphics takes from your kit 
Uh, you could automatically set it to, or just put it to auto, and Windows takes care of it and will give two gigabytes to the integrated graphics. So just leave this to auto. Otherwise, it's going to dedicate uh, two gigabytes all the time, even you know when you're not doing anything to do with the, the graphics card. So uh, you know you could even you know, set this to 64 megabytes. Remember, this is uh, RAM. It, it's on your. It's using your onboard RAM, and Windows will flip over to onboard RAM if it runs out of video memory. That's just the way it works. So there's no need to alter this setting, but in case you really wanted to, you could change this to two gigabytes, just showing you that. But uh, yeah, there's all kinds of settings in here, but that's pretty much all you need to do and uh, hit save. And hopefully uh, you'll get right into uh, you know a boot screen after you hit save. Uh, and there won't be any issues with you know uh, it not posting. But if it does, remember you can reset the BIOS by uh, there's a jumper on your motherboard. Uh, some motherboards even have two BIOSes and stuff like that. So now we're loading into Windows. Everything looks copacetic, and uh, boom, my oh little clue to what I'm doing with the computer there. But if we open up uh, CPU ID and hardware monitor. You'll want these two programs to check the speeds and temperatures and whatnot. But, uh, you know, we see 4 gigahertz right here. And we go into memory, this right here, times that by 2. And you have the speed of your memory, which would be 3200, 1600 times 2. Awesome. So we are set. We are awesome. We see here our core voltage is, you know, hovering around the... It's going a little bit higher than the 1.38 that we had set. But that's because, like I say, auto uh, LLC, load line calibration, it's doing a little bit of work, you know, to start Windows right there, and it's thinking it needs a little bit more voltage. But with that big tower cooler I have on there, the package uh, temperature is uh, negligible, 36 degrees when it was loading into Windows, and uh, it's hovering at idle 21. That is awesome. So, um, you know, just in case you are, uh, you know, curious, I'll just quickly put a load on the CPU. We'll launch Heaven Benchmark, and uh, we'll need this to overclock the CPU or the GPU, anyways. But um, we'll see here that when the CPU is at load temperatures, uh, you know, on the on the package 42, like with that big tower cooler on there, even at four gigahertz, uh, I didn't see it get over 60 degrees on the package uh, in Cinebench even. So real safe at four gigahertz with uh, under 1.4 volts. You know, we see here it's hovering around 4 volts. So, um, you know, we've got this open. You're gonna need Ryzen Master to overclock your GPU. And you can even overclock the CPU right in software from this. But uh, what I did was I went into gaming mode and then, um, you know, I turned off this because I don't want to overclock the CPU in here. Uh, you can do things like turn, you, basically this just makes it so the options aren't, you know, you don't see the options there uh, and they're not gonna change in the profiles. But uh, we see here, there, you know, you can change your voltage, your SOC voltage uh, and your graphics voltage in here. But uh, I just have it set to 1563. But by default, for some reason, it was all the way down here at like 400 when I when I first launched Ryzen Master, and it literally did limit the GPU to 400 megahertz, which is bad. So you'll want to set this manually up to uh, you know it's, it's 1250 by default, uh, you know according to the specs of the GPU, but you know provided by AMD. But I was having you know luck without altering any other settings here, uh, running it at this speed here 1563 hit apply we'll instantly see the fps grow here and uh you know it, it's looking good see here vega graphics 1550 megahertz no problem and uh that's where i was getting you know the ample performance kind of the sweet spot now if you have exotic cooling or you know big cooler on your apu you might even be able to get this higher by messing with uh, graphics voltage but in ryzen master if you want to change the voltage or any of this of these other options it does require you to restart the computer and uh, i don't really care to make it you know to, to, to push it any further especially when most people will you know 
be using the Wraith cooler or you know that came with it, the Wraith stealth, uh, and that's you know no we're not going to really going to hit any limits with that cooler. So you're going to need a better cooler. And uh, but yeah, look see here, no problems with temperatures, and you know the temperature you know is, is just pretty much taken care of with a nice little overclock on here. So uh, we'll throw me back to me in the studio so I can do a little conclusion, but that is how I overclock the CPU, the GPU, and the memory on my uh, Ryzen 2400G. Oh, so what do I think of Raven Rich? It's, it's awesome. I mean, I think this is where things are heading. You're gonna see, uh, you know, in the next couple generations of Ryzen and, you know, you see Raja Ghidori over at Intel trying to make their own, you know, GPU. You're going to start seeing now that dies are shrinking and the, you know, we're into like the 10, 12, 14 nanometer process and it's going to go lower. There's going to be more integrated graphics on CPUs that's actually worth using. And, uh, you know, with, a, you know, a little bit of proper, uh, you know, configuring and stuff like that, these things could end up, you know, in, in some decent games being like completely usable, uh, for modern titles. So, uh, bravo to Ryzen, bravo to AMD for, you know, bringing Vega, you know, a, a good version of Vega to the consumer market. You know how their graphics cards are pretty much a joke at this point. Well, this APU is an entry, you know, an entry level gaming machine that later on down the line you could grab and, you know, freaking dedicated graphics card, probably not this one, and uh, put it in the same system and there you go. You've upgraded. You have basically a Core i7 gaming system from a few years ago with the option for, you know, dedicated graphics. That's a real upgrade path. That's an awesome alternative, uh, you know, and I think things will only get better. So, uh, yeah, I really like it. I think it's a cool idea. I'm going to put it in an PC. We'll do a long-term test. And uh, I think we'll also do... Uh, the APU versus the 750 Ti I recently reviewed, which, you know, that video is here. It would make a lot of sense to just test the same games at the same, you know, uh, resolution and quality settings and do a comparison. As well as stick around the channel. Please hit the subscribe button already because I show you how to overclock things. Show you how to get the max performance out of your little budget systems. Things like this. Freaking finally got a f pure Fermi. I mean, this isn't the 450 GTS. This is a 480 that I spent a hundred freaking dollars on uh, eBay to get Canadian. I know I'm crazy, but I wanted to test this so bad. Probably George Foreman grill some meat on it or something. That's what you do with that. And then if you're wondering what the HTPC build is, well, I'll give you a little, you know, a little proof that this is going to be cool. That's the case. That's all I'm showing. So follow me on Twitter because there's I'm updating my little progress with the HTPC build on there via pictures. It's always fun to check me out on Twitter. Hit the subscribe button. If you consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be lovely. That helps me get this stuff in my hands a little quicker. Because a lot of the stuff I have to pay for myself. I thank Reven for sending me this uh, crazy-ass giant cooler. It's pretty dang good, even if there is no AM4 bracket in the box. Oversight, but you know, it's got to be a little bit old. It says freaking support for Haswell on it, and then, um, yeah, the gigabyte board's doing good, the APU's good, the RAM worked. Like, what more could you ask for? Uh, it's a pretty nice little system, and I mean, the cooler is bigger than the, the motherboard itself, so we're, we're shrinking things down. It's a fun time. So, thanks for listening to me blather. There is a lot of cool stuff upcoming. Huh? And an HTPC build, and uh, oh, let's let's review some RGB fans. Got to get that out of the way. There's just tons of stuff coming up on the channel. So thanks very much for helping me hit 30,000 subscribers, uh, and I, I look forward to hitting 100,000 this year. Let's make it happen. See you guys in another video. Ryzen APU with Vega graphics. A bye from Timmy Joe for sure. See you guys later. Woo!